Good afternoon. I hope you had a good lunch, a good nap. So up on the board now are Isaac Newton's three three laws of motion. We are not done uh, studying these laws. So we'll spend a few more uh, sessions uh, investigating and discovering these principles. But we do have our first evidence for each of these. Newton's first law says every object it continues in a straight in a state of rest or of uniform speed in a straight line unless a non-zero net force is, is exerted on it. Are you reading this? Okay. We did an experiment where we were able to move this up and down at a constant speed and we noticed that the, the force did not change. So we all agreed that it was possible for something to move at a constant speed without the force changing. But we haven't yet, we haven't yet all agree that it's always the case. I think most of us have sort of logically concluded that if something is at rest, then the net forces must be zero. Yesterday, when we were on skateboards, and you were pulling each other, you noticed that with the constant force, the person on the skateboards kept moving faster and faster and faster and faster. And when I was in the chair, and I was moving this way in the chair, and Stamata slowed me down, I was moving slower and slower and slower until I stopped. So, Newton's second law says that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force exerted on it. It's in the direction of the net force and is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. This aspect of Newton's law is not something we have investigated yet, but we will. 
Newton's third law is something we started with. We notice if we put two of our force meters together, that the force is equal and opposite. It's always equal. And so that's what Newton's third law says. Whenever an object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts a force equal in strength and opposite in direction on the first object. I'm pushing down on the floor because of gravity and the floor is pushing up on me. You are all sitting on cushions and your weight, your gravity is pushing down on the cushion and the cushion is pushing back up on you. We would live in a very strange world if this was not the case. It took humans a really long time to develop these, these ideas. And Newton was building off the work of many, many others when he wrote these laws. He worked with many others. He was building off of the work of many others when he wrote down these rules. Also, there is a spiritual connection to uh, Newton's third law. <laughs> uh, because forces arise as interactions between two objects, the monk back at the monastery that annoys you, who annoys you, uh, cannot be only his fault. So we would like to uh, think a little bit more about this, the second law, and we will do this in the context uh, of um, the gravitational force. So this is a big, tall tower. And there are feathers and a bowling ball that are being pulled up to the ceiling. All the air will be removed from the tower. So here the air has not been removed yet. Otherwise that person would die. And the ball was dropped and uh, the feathers were dropped at the same time and as we expect, the ball hits the ground first. So now, the tower is going to be closed and all the air will be removed. 
and then a lung has you the tongue of the rest. So now they have a pump that takes all the air out. And you can see the tree put the tree in the tree. They get a lung the tongue of the rest. And that takes quite a bit of time to do. And in the meantime, they have the ball and the feathers at the top of the ceiling. They drop them. And they're showing you this in slow motion. They're showing you this in slow motion. So they have slowed down the time. Okay. And you see that in the absence of air, the ball, the bowling ball, and the feather hit the ground at the same time from a very high height. Should I show the feather hammer? And this is an older video. From the moon, uh, an astronaut on the moon, on the Apollo 15 mission. Holds a hammer and a feather. So it is not as good a video quality as the other one. So he's getting ready to release both of them at the same time from the same height. And there they go. Let's see this again. There they go, they hit the surface of the moon at the same time. Just like in the big chamber where they had sucked out all the air, there is no air on the moon. So nothing for the, there's no force of air to push on the feather or the hammer. This is very surprising, isn't it? None of us have any experience living in a place without air. None of us have any experience where objects move with uh, constant speed in a specific direction and they never slow down and stop. The reason for that is we have air 
and air pushes different objects in different ways. And every surface, every surface has a little bit of friction, um, even if it is very small. So, what we want to do now is we want to think about what about gravity is the same for the ball and for the feather. Okay? So, one way to, uh, to ask the question is, could it be that the earth, in the absence of air, pulls on the ball and on the feather with the same force? Most of them are seeing yes, he's seeing Marire. No. So imagine that I go into the chamber that has no air. I need a special suit. What would I do to measure? the force that the earth exerts on the ball. You need the weight of the ball. How would I find the weight of the ball? How hard the ball is hitting the ground? So, do you think the ball hits the ground with the same force that the feather hits the ground? Couldn't I go? Here is the ball. Here is the ball. I'm wearing my suit. There is no air. And I hang the ball from my spring scale. Would the reading of the spring scale give me the value of the gravitational force that the earth is exerting on the ball? Yes, it's showing the gravitational force. So I could go and I could do this in the empty uh, tower. And then I could go in the empty tower and I could put the feather there. So, would the spring stretch as much as the ball did? No, it won't. It will not. And so then, the force, uh, the earth is not pulling on them with the same force. 
di la du se kule gi thien jura ni ga la thien di chik ba thing min dos no no but they hit at the same time they hit the ground at the same time which means something about their motion is the same in a sala tue jura mola di tu du tuzu chigla tu gu ras di la du khala chikta wu la na kunju yu gu che jura di la tae ras so this is a speedometer ta di ngonju jok se jel che di res and right now this speedometer reads 80 kilometers per hour ta di thanda jok se jel che ndu kala da di khol le shlan ge jul le do ani chuzu chignala kilometer ge jul du re shlan jok se tungu re or it could be 80 meters per second ya mena di karcha chigla mirror ge jul yin si re what does 80 meters per second mean ta karcha chigla ani meter ge jul ana ghar lagi re thanda ghar re because the object is moving at 80 meters per second. What does it mean for an object to move 80 meters per second? The karcha chigla mobu di mirror geju dugu dula na ta khari ko har li dus. Jose the re la rani khari khani rosh poli. Okay, most of them are saying speed. Speed is a word, it is not a meaning. Yes, the speed of the object is 80 meters per second. But what does that number mean? How, yeah, how, can, that, how can that number help me plan a trip? Plan a trip? A trip. Mm -hmm. ตัดโยเซตึงกดอังกิจีดีอังกิดีงาตะยามาจุนจุชิโกเอนะดีชาชิเซจุระดีละโปรบะฮาริชิเรสตะยามาจุนจุชิดูกะละโยระโยเซต
Then Tim Niba Jua Nudengi. The Karshi or Laoina, Kissi di Gosish Dor, the Gua Dru Meoina, and it sang shook the level rail and she rest. A speedometer not changing could either be this speedometer or this speedometer. The Joseph Jelche Kandijin by Nare, the Nare, Gandhi by Nares. What movement does this object do? The Ding Mobuch Dor, Dina Yugu Kandichishas. No, there is no movement. There is no movement. So this is what Newton says. An object that is at rest or moves with a constant speed in a given direction have zero net force. <laughs> If I were to put a speedometer on the falling bowling ball, do you think that the speedometer would read a number that would not change? It will change? It will change. It will change. It would start at zero. And it would smoothly and in the same way increase its speed. It would not do. It would not do this, but it would smoothly increase the reading. So that is what we mean by acceleration. By constant acceleration. A constant acceleration tells me that the speed is changing by the same amount every second. So we could measure by how much the speed of the falling bowling ball changes every second. And we find that all objects on the surface of the earth, close to the surface of the earth, fall with the same acceleration. And that acceleration has a specific number on earth. And we call that the free fall acceleration. This means the speed of the falling object changes by 10 meters per second every second it falls. This means that the ball as it goes down, it starts at zero. After one second, it moves at 10 meters per second. After one second, at 20 meters per second. After one second, 30. After one second, 40. After one second, 50. After one second, 60. And so it takes the ball 10 seconds to go from 0 meters per second to 100 meters per second. Dilla do dit and the massage jura, polo di. This side, the Josita and a carcha chigla, mirachu duures, Josidi. Dilla do carcha chig drodugala, mirachu duures. Yangu carcha chig droina, mirinu shooting gra, let you do it choina, carcha chula dugala, mirakazutungur laona, mirigatungures.
So this is what all objects have in common. This is what all the objects on the surface of the earth have in common. Not the same gravitational force. So while Kelekla um, writes this in Tibetan, we are going to stop for tea time, and uh, and uh, you will be able to copy it when you come back from tea time. So, 